I've had a lot of people ask, how do you really set up the star sense? So I'm just going to go ahead through my whole setup. It's a simple setup. I'm not trying to do anything fancy, and because I, that's all you need with the star sense. So I'm going to try to point toward north with this little part right here. And it's going to be a little bit off, so I'm going to move it over. And so it's daylight, so I should be able, we're pointing north right about now. And I'm level here, so now I can just start adding my pieces. You might have noticed I have a street light right here, and I have a street light right there. So it does interfere if I'm trying to view this direction or that direction. The good news is south is where a lot of the things that I like to see uh, and my house blocks the rest so I'm pretty much stuck with going that direction every night. Okay, when it comes to telescopes I've done a lot of stupid stuff. When I bought this telescope I also bought a smaller telescope at first so I just bought this mount and a smaller telescope. Problem was this mount came with a really big heavy counterweight. Well, that's too much for the telescope that I was using, so I thought, oh, I'm smart. I'll just tie sandbags to the telescope. Well, as it rotates, you know, they fall off, and it's a really stupid idea. Um, so eventually I did buy this 11-pound, which works much better. Sometimes you just need the right tool for the right job. Just to let you know, I've done a lot of stupid stuff. I've spent like half my night trying to figure out why this wasn't working. Lens cap. I'm pretty stupid sometimes. Now I've had the star sense up front. I've had the star sense in the back. It didn't make any difference at all, as long as it's pointing in the right direction. Here's a wide angle lens, so you don't want to have it too far back because it'll probably you know, start picking up the rail right here or whatever you're going to put it on. Um, if you have on the, the 8 inch or the 11 inch, it's going to be sitting on the side and it's still going to be catching part of the uh, telescope, you would think, because it is a wide angle lens. Um, so I'm comfortable with it just sitting right about here. Okay, it's getting closer, about 30 minutes away. I can already see Venus, just waiting to see if I can see Polaris, and then I'll make my last little adjustments if needed, otherwise I'm just going to leave it the way it is. It's like one of those, uh, you know, horseshoes or hand grenades, you just got to get close. Okay, I can see the North Star now, and I'm exactly right on it, I mean, I'm just a little bit off. Um, as you can see, the neighbors were nice enough to turn all their porch lights on all the way up and down the block, so that was nice of them. Um, so I'm just waiting another 10 15 minutes and I'll be ready to go. Okay, I'm ready. The one complaint I do have about the Star Sense the cord for the pad is too short. So as it goes around, it easily pops right out and uh, it just dangles the rest of the night. So it's going to track a few times and then um, we're going to be set and we'll see how fast this goes. I think it's going to do two or three different spots before it decides it knows where it's at. After that, I'm going to hook my camera up and we're going to start taking pictures. Now, if this happens to shine toward one of the street lights, it's not going to get a very good picture, so then it'll hunt again. When it gets done, I can get about 20, 30 second long exposures before there's just a little bit of that movement. The moon, it'll track for longer, but 
further away objects. I get about 20, 30 seconds before it finally actually moves. So if 20, 30 seconds will do you, the star sense is a good thing. And what it's doing, it's taking a picture, and then it's checking its database to see where that is. done. Let's go take some pictures.